Hi is so good, monkey woman. A rape joke is not that mean. It's like, what are you talking about? All drama. They just didn't want me to win. The fuck am I one? Uh, you did. We got a hot one right here. We got a hot one right here. I am not a fucking pedophile. Hey, it's your Uncle Herman here, and I'm an alpha male. I'm here today to try and make sense of all of the controversies that Shane Dawson's been involved in over the past 10 years or so that he's been on this platform that have ultimately led to this huge conglomeration of allegations that are circling the internet at present. So when he started his YouTube channel in 2008, him and some of his family members actually lost their jobs because of the videos that he was posting online. And he mentioned this in a lot of his old videos. Pretty open with my schedule right now, not having a job. Um, if there's any sugar mamas or sugar daddies out there, hit a brother up. This was a great point raised by YouTuber Adam McIntyre, where he talked about how it's possible that the actual cause of him getting fired was the offensive content that he was uploading at the time. Ugh. So the sob story was that his mom and his family, whatever him, all got fired from their really good jobs because he did YouTube and he was seen as a freak. Now, I don't know why we didn't piece it together before and I tweeted about this and everyone was like, holy shit, this makes sense. The reason Shane Dawson got fired from that job, in my opinion, was because his content at that time was way over the limit. I had a look into the situation and found this deleted video from August 2008 was actually cited as the video that got him, his mother and his brother fired from their job. See, I have what you may call... Okay, we're in Los Alamitos. I have black people here, so... The technical term is afro texture. <laughs> I got, I got some afro texture, so Rima's gonna help me take care of that and make me look, you know, white again, I guess. <laughs> now, this actually seems like a sensible decision on the company's part, but Shane Dawson played it up on YouTube as a sob story. And this was perhaps the first time that the content that Shane was making on YouTube had real life consequences for him. Um, well, I got fired from my job because I made a video at work. And Oops. Yep. There are uh, some rules out there, right? Yeah, we might have been pole dancing. <laughs> so you may be aware that Shane is in a lot of hot water at the moment for a lot of content that he made in his early days on YouTube resurfacing, but this is not the first time that these clips have resurfaced or been called out. Perhaps this is the most mass attention they've gotten, but let's have a look into where these controversies all arose from. So Shane has always been a controversial figure. His sketches have consisted mainly of controversial characters over the years using blackface and racial slurs and what he calls edgy humour, but what most people are calling blatant racism. In 2014, a YouTuber by the name of Francesca Ramsey made a video where she called out Shane for his racist actions. This came at a time when Sam Pepper was banned from VidCon and condemned by viewers and content creators alike amongst his sexual abuse allegations. Francesca noted that the YouTube community seemed very well equipped to quickly shut down and stop supporting people like Sam Pepper, and rightfully so, but were happy to keep supporting those who had been openly racist. Instead, I decided to critique the content and not the creator. And that content includes jokes about rape, molestation, child abuse, domestic assault, racism, slurs, and also really inappropriate comments about Trayvon Martin, Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, um, stereotypes about all different types of people of color. And to be totally honest with you, I'm not interested in watching this content because it's really upsetting and damaging to me, but I did think that it was important to talk about it. In 2014, Shane made an apology video for his racially insensitive past, amongst clips of him using racial slurs and blackface resurfacing online. Now, this video was not a well thought out apology, at least in my opinion. He even admitted that he hadn't really thought about what to say and he didn't take accountability for his actions or make an effort to fully understand how he had hurt people or that he held racist views and assumed that his audience had never been offended by his quote unquote edgy humor. First of all, I'm not racist, but in my head I was just like, oh no, I'm just becoming a character. I'm not making fun of them for being black, I'm just looking like that, using bronzer, making myself look like, how are you doing, like Wendy? Which didn't offend my audience. I never got comments about it, it was fine. But it, uh, that, the biggest thing I learned was that just because it doesn't offend my audience doesn't mean it isn't offending mass amounts of people outside of my audience. 
He recognised how poor his apology had been six years later in his most recent video, however, the damage has already been done. As Francesca put, he perpetuated racist stereotypes onto a very young and impressionable audience who will have grown up thinking that that was okay, and that's incredibly harmful. However, he continued to have a platform, and many people have come forward talking about how he made them think that that was okay. Around the time of making his initial apology video in 2014, he had reached 10 million subscribers, and in the years since, that's doubled. It seems that many people were able to look past it and forgive him, and undoubtedly many white people in particular, who the apology was never for in the first place. Hey, Shane Dawson is here, up for creator of the year, spent half his career in blackface. Huh? Nobody remembers Shanene in this room? Okay. And... <laughs> I think that this comment on the original apology video sums it up perfectly. Can't believe I have to be saying this, but if you're not black, you cannot excuse him. You cannot accept his apology and you cannot defend him. It's not your apology to forgive. I also highly recommend Cat Black's video on the topic that I'll link in the description as she makes some very insightful points about this issue. Now, in the same year as this all went down, 2014, he released his movie titled Not Cool, with an accompanying docuseries called The Chair, which documented the making of the film. Now, firstly, a video has been circulating of him being very rude behind the scenes of his movie. And it's pissing me the f off. And he says, look, I'm going to be honest with you, I've had clients that have gone online, watched Shane's stuff, and said, I don't want to be a part of that. When I was an actor, I was auditioning for everything. I don't quite understand the logic of being picky when you have no job. Well, it's been mentioned many, many times the e is a problem for people. So if we just like lose that, I'm just saying. I'm not taking anything out of the movie to please a bunch of out of work actors in Pittsburgh who should be lucky to get an audition for a feature film. I think no director has ever taken anything out of a movie to get somebody to audition. Shane? I'm angry that we're finding out about this two days before I we start agree. filming I, the movie. I don't know. I'm gonna go. Shane, stop it. You can't go. We have I'm too much to do. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do this in my so here he's upset that people are pulling out of his movie because it's too offensive or rude. And looking back, I have a lot of respect for those people as the movie was overtly sexual, every non-white character was a stereotype, and the Los Angeles Times reported on it, calling the movie a stab. No, a frantic machete wipe at comedy that only date rapists, racists, and sociopaths could love. The persistently ugly not call begins with rapid fire gags about how overweight, undersexed losers coitus with vegetables, loose bowels, rivers of puke and slut shaming, and the film finds a way to tumble downhill from there. When it's not built around mean-spirited revolting jokes about anyone who isn't Dawson's colour, attractiveness level, size and gender, it, the genitalia exposing feces eating homeless black man is simply jaw-dropping. It's a dreary or screaming pity party about thoroughly unappealing individuals. He actually even joked about this later in an interview, laughing about this report. And yes, you can say that this report is dramatic, but it also shows him failing to take any of these criticisms. New York Times, which was a great moment, I framed it. Call me, say, if you like Shane's movie, then you must be a rapist, a racist, a homophobe, or a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> Zachary Quinto was also a producer of the Chair series, and subsequently was quoted calling Shane's film deeply offensive and tasteless, and that Dawson should not be making films at all, and he actually removed his name from the film in disgust. Again, I think this shows that people have always been questioning Shane's humour. He's always been controversial, and people have raised so many red flags about him, yet he continued to thrive on YouTube for over 10 years. So then, in January 2018, Shane had to make another apology video when a clip from a podcast started circulating in which he very disturbingly sexualized as a child. Here's so, like, the worst part of it. I actually went to Google and I'm like, I oh don't want to see... You could get arrested! I know, but I just wanted to see, like, okay, let me just pretend, yeah. let me pretend like I'm a pedophile for a sec. His excuse was that edgy humour was his thing back in the day and that he was playing a character. And I don't doubt that people can change, but him aggressively shouting to his young, impressionable fans that he is not a paedophile does not sit right with me as a way to deal with such a sensitive situation. I am not a fucking pedophile. I, Shane Yaw, my real name, go on record saying I am not a fucking pedophile. But yet again, the internet forgave him and moved on. 
His apology video got 650,000 likes and only 12,000 dislikes in comparison and a lot of people are now coming back to this video and I think that this comment from a week ago addresses the situation well. It reads, it's never okay to sexualize a child, that's just a fact. There's no excuse for calling a child sexy. As much as I want to defend him, there really isn't one single reason to say that's okay, even if it's a joke. It's not right that they cut those parts out, but it's also not right that Shane was making those jokes and that's all I wanted to say. The cutting parts out is a reference to how the clip that was circulating the internet was actually edited and Shane said that it was edited to make him look worse. Oh, but of course they cut all those out, added scary music, Google image search pictures of little girls, which is creepy by the way, whoever edited that video, and made it seem like this creepy conspiracy, but not even a conspiracy because they said it was a fact. They said Shane Dawson. But I don't think that that detracts from the fact that he still said those things. So we fast forward now to March of 2019, when even more of his past has started to resurface. Specifically, this time, it was in relation to his cat. A clip from his podcast from an episode aired in 2015 started circulating social media in which Shane says the following. No, my dogs are really never... needy guy. No, <laughs> the things I've done to my poor animals, they will never love me. Mm. Done terrible things. I used to... Oh, <laughs> oh no. I don't know if you want to go there, Shane. What'd you do? <laughs> One time, I laid my cat down on her back. Are you going to get arrested for this? I don't... I don't know. No. Think about it. Hmm. I don't think so. Okay, go ahead. I didn't penetrate. <laughs> I laid the cat down on her back I and then I, I, I moved her little chicken legs, like, you know, spread open or whatever. And I was like, if I just, like, hump, but, like, on her tummy, like, that's not weird. Like, whatever. And then I humped and I humped and I humped and I kept going and kept going. And I came all over the cat. No, you did not. It was, like, my first sexual experience. No I was also, way. like, 19. <laughs> so it's like, you know. Wait a minute. Wait a second. Did you just say you came on a cat? <laughs> Guys, I think I have to put money in the meter. Yeah, right? <laughs> Now, this was, of course, very disturbing, and he issued an apology tweet saying, I didn't fuck my cat, I didn't cuddle my cat, I didn't put my dick anywhere near my cat, I've never done anything weird with my cats. He said he didn't want to make another apology video and tried to address it all on Twitter, saying, I've apologised many times for all the dumb shit I've said in podcasts and videos over the years. I've learned my lesson over and over again, and I'm more confident now in my ability to be entertaining by just being myself and not being so shocking for laughs. The story was fake and was based on a dumb, awful sketch idea I had years ago that I never made. And when the opportunity came up for a funny moment in the podcast, I told it as if it was a real story, which was disgusting and very dumb. My goal with the podcast and with my videos years ago was to tell shocking stories that would make people laugh and scream, oh my god, no you didn't, and think I was so crazy. It's embarrassing and I hate myself for it. He says, I feel like without my past, I wouldn't be who I am today and I wouldn't be able to grow and spend my energy on things that actually mean something. This has been the best two years of my life and it's because I've been able to drop the act and be myself and I'm sorry for not doing it sooner. So now we get to the present day. I will quickly address this Tati Westbrook drama, but I think that's a distraction from the much more serious issues about Shane that are once again resurfacing. So one thing that he's under fire for currently is this situation with Tati Westbrook, who went viral last year after her video titled By Sister that accused James Charles of a number of things, notably being predatory and betraying her company to promote opposing vitamins. It had massive consequences for James Charles, with him losing millions of fans and subscribers at the time, and Shane Dawson was apparently in on this from the beginning. Shane said that James Charles was a monster and that James Charles was hurting minors. Shane said he was planning to interview victims for the docu-series. He told me that something needed to be done to stop him from hurting more people. Over the course of the next few weeks, he and Jeffrey fed me so much information that I felt sick. Almost every day, there was more information and new allegations. As a victim of abuse myself... Sh oh my god. You are so manipulative. To think of facing public... You're fake, you're fake crying. You are fake crying! You are fake crying! That is not real! Oh my god! We now know that many of the allegations made in the video were false, and the sudden takedown of James's career was somewhat unjust. I will also remind you that Tati Westbrook is a full 38-year-old woman who decided to broadcast her issues with a 19-year-old at the time to millions of people on the internet, and now she's regretting it. 
and apparently Shane Dawson, another man in his 30s, offered to edit this video to help with the thumbnail and title and actually started the rumours and accusations against James, allegedly, which is particularly shocking as he pretended to be surprised in his documentary when it all went down. But underneath all of this beauty drama, there's a much larger issue at hand. On June 27th, 2020, Shane Dawson uploaded a video to his channel called Taking Accountability, in which he addressed a lot of his past controversies. Now, he did make an attempt to take accountability, which is somewhat commendable. I think that some of the things he said were valid, but they were said too late. He's 31 years old, which means that 10 years ago, he was still an adult, and all the things that he were doing were definitely considered wrong. He even admits in this video that at the time he should have lost his career for the things that he did, but he didn't, and I think that says a lot. Or, I don't know the right word, but it's something that I shouldn't even be able to get out of. I should lose everything for that. He also apologised to Francesca Lee for regarding her criticisms as hate in the past and the racial abuse that she suffered as a result of his fans. Bearing in mind that Francesca's video was made in 2014, only six years ago, when all he would have had to do was listen to her criticisms and take them on board then. Now, in this apology video, he throws around statements like, I wasn't myself, and blaming his jokes on his pain and his past. He also says, I am not somebody who would ever talk about a child, like in seriousness, I would never talk about a child in any way that was inappropriate. That is disgusting, that is gross, it is not something I would ever do, it is something I did for shock value or because I thought it was funny or like, oh my god, my child molest your character or whatever. It's all gross and I promise that is not real. Now, this statement is a particularly interesting one to look into as a lot of very disturbing clips have surfaced on Twitter saying incredibly inappropriate things to minors. I'll link the Twitter thread below that you can read at your own discretion if you wish. This is beyond YouTube drama and not just because people beyond YouTube are involved, notably the Smith family taking to Twitter to condemn Shane for sexualizing Willow Smith when she was just 11 years old, but this is also recorded predatory behavior that should be reported. It's way too consistent now to be passed off as a joke or as edgy humour and no apology years later should really be able to excuse this behaviour. Not only did he do this, he recorded it and edited it and uploaded it. That's a lot of steps and I don't care how long ago this was, not that 10 years is really even that long ago in the grand scheme of things, but I don't think this should be excused. When we thought James Charles was a predator, people stopped supporting him immediately because they didn't support that behaviour. James Charles got cancelled on little to no evidence, whereas Shane has recorded evidence of him being predatory to young girls, racist and talking freely and openly about harassing children and animals, and the internet flocked to his docuseries and supported it anyway. It doesn't make sense. This man has never deserved to be forgiven time and time again. This is getting very opinionated now, but I think that this post on Reddit again sums up my personal stance quite well. I definitely think the meaning of cancellation has been taken out of context, but make no mistake, when someone has a history of paedophilic tendencies and problematic behaviour, I fully support cancellation. What I do not support is people telling others to kill themselves or threats of violence against them. This is not how to get a message across. I won't tolerate people receiving pleasure from someone else's downfall. When I hear the word cancellation, I think of moving on from that individual. That means not supporting their work. I'm proud of YouTube and Target for taking a stand and I wish more people would too. Stop giving people money that don't deserve it. This narrative that we can't be mad at someone because they may kill themselves is really toxic. It's okay to be angry and it's okay to want justice. Just don't beat someone up in the process. I guess my ultimate goal out of all of this is for Shane to seek professional help. Now, in regards to YouTube and Target, YouTube have now demonetized his videos and Target took his books off their shelves. Morphe have also stopped selling his makeup. Shane Dawson has genuinely done some awful things and he keeps getting cancelled and then goes away for a while, videos himself being scared of social media and then apologises and the cycle repeats. So to be clear, I don't think that this man should be cancelled. Cancelling gets thrown around so much each day on social media that I think the word is starting to lose meaning. I think that we need to control, alt, delete this man off of the platform. He should not be able to broadcast this and make millions off of it. And not only that, but make millions and then 
perpetuate the idea that he's poor. And I think that no amount of Shane deleting his videos and trying to do damage control is going to stop these clips resurfacing. They're out there now and I think we just need to move on from him as a creator. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. I have, as always, been your Uncle Herman. You can subscribe for more commentary content. You can also follow me on Twitter if you want to do that. My DMs are open on there if you want to suggest any videos and I'll see you in the next one.